Wouldn't it be nice to have several thought leaders in your industry know and love your brand? Start a podcast. Invite your industry's thought leaders to be guests on your show. And start reaping the benefits of having a network full of industry influencers. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to B2B Growth. I am your host for today's episode, Nikki Ivey with Sweetfish Media. I've got with me today, Chris Beal, CEO of Connect and Sell. Chris, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Been out for a run already. Look, see, he's, he's already done more than I have today. So he's, he's showing me up. He's really charismatic, guys. So get ready. We're going to be talking today about why the SDR role is a grind and whether or not it has to be. The answer is, spoiler alert, it doesn't. And we're going to be talking about this concept of conversational abundance and how that can set SDRs and organizations free from the SDR grind. But before we get into any of that, Chris, I would love for you to just give us a little bit of background on uh, yourself and what you and the folks at Connect and Sell are up to these days. Sure. I mean, I'm just a kid who was raised out in the desert on books and animals, ended up going into physics and math, somehow ended up being a fuller brush man at some point because I needed a job and needed to make money. And I found out I was really good at knocking on doors and selling things to people. Did a bunch of startups, got tired of people not selling my software. So I started selling it myself and then stumbled onto Connect and Sell about eight years ago. And Connect and Sell is just all about conversational abundance. It's about going from a world where it's hard to get a conversation to a world where it's as easy as calling an Uber. I love it. So this, I, a lot of my experience when I was an individual contributor was SDR work and it was a grind and it was for this reason that we talk about, right? We talked about offline, the, the concept of conversational scarcity. Talk to us about how we replace scarcity with abundance. Sure. Well, to, to fix anything, you need to know its root cause. The root cause of conversational scarcity is really something that happened back in 2003 to 2005. And that is voicemail became ubiquitous and people acquired the habit of letting phone calls go to voicemail instead of answering them. So we reduced the number of what we call gatekeepers. They were actually helpers at the time who might help the conversation happen. So those human beings started going away out of business, especially at senior levels. And we replaced that with this default action, a null action, which is do nothing. It goes to voicemail. And the voicemail open rates plummeted between 2003 and 2005 by about 30% per year. And effectively, voicemail is a dead letter, but it's where all the calls go. So nowadays, it's 22 and a half, approximately 22.4 dials to get one actual human being who's on your list into a conversation. And that's going to take you an hour to an hour and a half. And that's the scarcity. It's just due to voicemail. So how do you fix it? Kind of brute force math is what we do. We just go, you know, why don't we go ahead and attack the problem at the root, which is we'll take care of all of the dialing, all of the navigation, all of the going to voicemail over and over. And when we get somebody who's a decision maker on the phone, we'll press a button, drop them into your ear. Bloop, you'll be talking to somebody. That's it. I love attack with math. My uh, math teacher would have been proud. They told me that we would use it someday in life. And well, here I am. Another another thing we talked about was there's scarcity and then there's uncertainty. Any little bit of uncertainty in, in uh, an SDR, any salesperson's mind before they go into a conversation is going to add to that feeling of, of dread or of a grind. But Chris is talking to me about how a script can set you free. Chris, let us know about it. How does that work? Yeah, I used to be an anti-script guy because I'm a pretty glib person. 
But when I was a fuller brush person, I said exactly the same thing every time somebody opened a door. And it set me free to let my personality come out in my voice. And I think the, the key is when we're under stress, it's hard for us to do two things at once. So to pick the right words and then to express them correctly with the correct uh, effective emotional delivery is hard. That's two completely different things, two different parts of your brain. The right words aren't really different from call to call on the very first conversation. So they can be crafted by somebody who knows linguistic psychology. Mm -hmm. You have to stay away from marketing words. There's a whole big reason for that. If you ever say anything that indicates what category your product's in, you will immediately get that objection. Thanks, we're set. So you have to craft the script so that it causes somebody to be most likely to be intrigued enough to take a meeting. And that's a piece of actual design, linguistic psychology design that needs to be done. But the delivery is you. It's your voice. It's your personality. And when you're free from having to come up with the words in real time or think that the words that you used last time must be the good ones because they work, that's called bad science, by the way, then you're actually free to express your personality and your voice. And what's really happening is the script's carrying 5 to 10% of the load. Your voice is carrying 90, 90 to 95% of the load. And you can't get your voice to work correctly if you're having to invent the words. I love it. I don't think it's any coincidence, Chris, that some of my all of my favorite and you know most impactful leaders that I've I've uh, been able to work with have been ones who are really good at writing scripts that set folks up for success the way that you're talking about there's this and also the element of science that you mentioned so um a lot of folks may have read a, a while back gong.io put out this the study about the first few words you use in a in a conversation right whether it's how are you doing or how have you been so to have just a little bit of science behind that had me going into conversations without having to wonder, like, is, is this person going to hang up if I ask them how their day is? Or what if I say, you know, hello versus saying hi? This, there's some data that says, say, how have you been? And I, whether that was true or not, my, the lack of uncertainty and the, yes. the abundance of confidence that had me going into those conversations to be able to be like, hey, how have you been? Killed it, crushed it. You know what I mean. And so you're yeah. you're so spot on. There's this this convergence of you know the the science of it and getting what we using the data that that exists versus going on like you and I talked about you know what we've done before tradition ego and all that that really is setting people free. Um, but I'll I'll stop waxing yeah. poetic about I get so passionate about this stuff. I love it. And so the other element. Once we've taken care of the abundance problem and then we've, we've taken care of the uncertainty is the isolation, right? It's, it can be really lonely on the other end of a, of a, of a cold call if, if you feel like, you know, it's super quiet in here. Is everybody listening to what I'm going to say? I used to, my first job where I had to make phone calls, I had to ask my boss to let me go in a super back corner of the office because I was afraid that other people around me would hear me. Um, Because we were making it up as we went along, right? Um, There was no script and there was no science. And so if other people hear me say something, they're going to think it's dumb. And it was just, there was a lot. So, but if we're all doing it together, it's social selling, but not in a way that, that we think, not in the LinkedIn buzzy way. Tell us about it, Chris. Yes. I mean, we're social creatures. We behave differently in a group than we do when we're alone. And uh, I don't know, you know, anybody watching this podcast, if they ever had a job at college or whatever, where they opened up something, you opened up a store, you open up a club where you work or whatever, it's creepy. I mean, think about that to that moment, you know, where you turn the yeah. key, you open the door and you go on, you go into the club and it's empty if that's where you worked or you go into the bar or you go into whatever it happens to be. It's creepy. It's, it's just too big. It's too quiet. It's not a great place for you to hold a conversation with anybody, mm-hmm. even if they showed up one on one. You fill the club full of people, it's easy to have conversations. You don't even need the alcohol. You just fill it full of people. People will have conversations, right? So when you call together, when, you, when you're doing outbound calling together, you're a different person. You're a more social person. It comes out in your voice. It'll show up in your body language. You're hearing other people. They're having fun. They're having success. It gets loud and it gets fun. It's not loud like like telemarketing loud, but loud like, hey, we're professionals who are doing something that involves talking with other people, making human connections. And that makes a little bit of noise. So when you combine it with the abundance, you know, conversations whenever you want them, three, four minutes apart, then it gets really fun. I had somebody tell me in one of our test drives, 
I asked her, what did you think? She was the general manager of this entire company. And we're standing in the middle of the floor. And I said, so what are your thoughts? And she said, I have no thoughts. I have tears of joy in my eyes. You have turned my silent library into a sales floor. So the notion of a sales floor as being a high energy environment, that's a real notion. The idea of a bunch of people sitting in the corner typing, it may as well be empty. So true social selling is when we sell together, not when we sell with digital media that somebody happened to label social. I love it. And the, the, the key here is that the energy that you're talking about, this social energy is coming from such an organic place in a professional place. It's not coming from this sort of bro culture place. Because trust me, I've been on loud sales floors. Oh, yeah. And it it wasn't coming from the place that you're talking about. It wasn't because we're all here on one accord having fun, you know, going, going after this thing. It was, you know, people wanting to be seen, heard, known. It was like, were the popular kids at, at a table in in uh, in high school? You know, the table that I was never invited to sit at. Oh. Uh, but, <laughs> but but what you're talking about is it's the nirvana of this thing. It's it's what I think everybody wants their sales floor to look like, and and the way people want to feel when they go to work as an SDR. Because honestly, when you're having conversations, it's such a fun job. Part of what I do here at Sweetfish Media is is SDR work. And the parts when I'm talking to people are absolutely the most fun parts. And so you are, you're preaching to the choir. This was such uh, valuable stuff. Remember those three nuggets, the problems we're solving for our scarcity of conversation, the uncertainty of of what you're going to say, and then the isolation of feeling like you're the only one doing it. And so if you replace that with abundance, uh, a script and a social selling culture, you're on your way. And the folks that connect and sell along with Chris are, are helping folks do that. Chris, how can people connect with you? So they can call me. I answer my <laughs> phone, 408-203-4321. Give it a shot. Never know. I might let it go to voicemail, but I might answer. <laughs> then I'm out there on LinkedIn a fair amount. Um, so, you know, easy to find Chris Beal, Chris 8649. The 8649 shows how nerdy I am. That spells Unix on a keypad. I started using it in 1983. Oh, my goodness. Just just so you know. And uh, that's, kind. you know, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. And then you could always email me, um, chris.beal at connectandsell.com. I love to hear from people. And, you know, if anybody really wants to try this experience with the abundance and with the lack of uncertainty and with the true social selling, they could sign up for one of our test drives. They tend to be free. They're wild experiences. It's a wild experience. It's transformative. And it all happens in just one day. So cool. Well, I'm going to run out and connect with Chris on LinkedIn. This has been really valuable and great. I can't wait for uh, for everyone to, to hear it. We got math, we got science, and we got art. It's a win. Thanks so much, Chris. All right. Thank one. you. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.